So let me introduce, let me do some introduction. You know, um, my name is Freddie Gutierrez. They call me Fred as well. I was raised by a single mom, you know, in midtown Manhattan. Then we moved to Brooklyn, New York, right? And she said this thing to us um, because we were getting older now. And she said, you know, you should accomplish three things. One, get an education, get a college degree. Two, plant a tree. And number three, write a book. Praise God. So, you know, um, today we're going to read from the Bible, right? And the word Bible comes from a Latin or Greek word that means book, Amen. right? So this book is uh, for all people for all times, even for now. It's relevant to us and it's relevant to your children. It's relevant to your children's children. It's for all times. And this book, the Bible is uh, it's written in 66 books. It's divided in two parts, the Old Testament and the New Testament, right? And there's about 40 authors that is written in a time span of uh, 1,500 years. But with one central theme, that Jesus loves you. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, so, but there's one book that's incomplete in the Bible. It's called the Books of Acts. And the reason why it's incomplete is because your story needs to be written there. Your book has to be written there. So let me ask you a question now. If, they were, if we were to write a book about you, a biography, what would be the title? Ha. Huh. What would be the title? So today, um, we're going to read from the book of Psalms 9. In your Bible, Psalms 9. All right, in verse 9 through 11. In Psalms 9, verse 9 through 11, reads like this. It says, The Lord is of refuge for those that are oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know your name trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Verse 11. Sing the praises of the Lord in throne in Zion, in throne in Jerusalem. Proclaim among the nations what he has done. Praise God. You know, so today, I'm moved to share what God has done in my life. Amen. And I'm going to title it, today's message, My Story. So, my story begins after a trip from Miami about 33 years ago. It was the spring it was springtime, you know, and what happened is that we came back home, a friend of mine and I, the rest of the team stood in Miami, and the reason we wanted to leave, because we had late business meetings, we, there was a lot of drugs, a lot of alcohol, a lot of clubbing, and my friend, who was really out in the world, says, look, we're going to lose it here, and I, I, and I was in agreement with him, we got to get out of here, even though the company wanted us to stay. They wanted to bring us back every weekend. We were staying in a fine hotel, but we didn't want none of that. So we just left. You know, I was two and a half years married, you know, but I wasn't fully committed because if I was fully committed, I, I would have not been in that situation. You see, my health, when I came back to New York, it started deteriorating. My health started going downhill. I remember I was feeling weak. I remember, you know, losing weight. I was getting emaciated. M mind you, I worked in a place, it was about beauty. We were in the beauty industry. Everybody had looked great. All these brand names, without system, all those people, you know, that's what the environment that we were in. And here I am looking like a mess. My coworkers, the girls would come to me and say, look, Fred, you look like bad. Stop doing what you're doing. The other friend was like, stop clubbing. Whatever you're doing, man, you look bad. Your eyes are red. My suits was, I was getting skinny. My suit started to swing on me. I said, man. But it didn't hit me until one day I was going to work on the subway. I almost fainted. And, you know, when I almost fainted, I said, this is really bad. So I carried myself to Long Island College Hospital. I went to the ER. And in the ER, right, you know, they took this exam and everything, blah, blah, blah. And then they come back to me and says, look, 
you have to come with us. And they isolated me in a room. That's when I thought it was really bad, you know? And I think if anybody would have walked in, I was so scared, so nervous. I think somebody walked in and said, boo, I would have dropped that. That's how scared I was, you know? And then uh, realization kind of hit me, you know? In New York, New York City at the time, there was an epidemic going on, you see? And this reminds me when I was in high school. In high school, I used to work in the east side of New York City, and I was the youngest one in this crowd, and everybody around during the weekends, they would gather, and they would go to Fire Island, the Hamptons, and so forth, and I was always invited. And if this particular person, his wife, would show up, <coughs> there was drugs enough to cover Fire <coughs> Island. So it was gonna be crazy. So. Here I am in the midst of this, remembering this. I even went to college, and when I went to college, I remember this happening just blowing up. It was getting crazier and crazier. Then I started trying to reach to my friends. They all began to disappear. I remember we visited this particular friend, and we had to go with masks and stuff, and he disappeared later on. He passed on, and so forth. People were disappearing in New York City. They were dying from this, and here I am in this hospital, sitting down. And I'm just recalling, I said, my God, all my bohemian life, all my rebel life, the way I want to do things, is ending. I'm about to die. Mm. And here I am. And here comes, <laughs> this team walks in and asks these questions. Um, how many men you have in your life? How many women you have in your life? What kind of intravenous drugs have you been using? What kind of drugs you do? Are you gay? Are you bisexual? I was just totally nervous. Then they came back and they said, you know what? We found an infection in your blood. We don't know how to treat this, but we're gonna give you some medication to see how, you go, how it goes. And I want you to contact, if you're married, call your spouse. If you're not married, Call your family. If you have no family, call your friends. Look at the questions. Look at the categories I'm being put in. So I called my wife. I was so scared. I was so ashamed that my life, my double life, has caught up to me. And here I am in the hospital, about to die. You know? And the truth comes in later on. You see, the truth is that I didn't know the truth, you know? The truth is Jesus. I was so far away from the truth because I was doing my thing, you see? And my mom saw me one day and says, are you all right? I said, because apparently I didn't look good. And I said, I don't know. She says, don't worry, this Saturday I will take you to my friend. I said, okay. And she's going to do some kind of cleanse on you. I said, okay. You know, I'm willing to try anything. So when we went to meet her friend in the Bronx, I remember, um, we, she, took us to, she took me to this room. I'd never been in this room before. I'd been to a house before. I'd never been to this room before. And in this room, there's fire. There's all kind of, uh, uh, I don't know, ves ves I don't know, some kind of leaves, all kind of stuff, man. It was good. And there's a Bible. In the midst of all this craziness. And if you don't believe in the devil, I want to tell you that at that moment, that woman became possessed, something possessed, and it wasn't good. And she started doing some crazy things and everything and started talking gibberish and so forth. After we were done, we went to the living room. And when we were in the living room, you know, we'd kind of say all oh, goodbye, and I was the the last person to, about to leave the apartment, as I was stepping over to the hallway, she holds my arm, and she says these words. She says, you know, you're not going to be my friend anymore. I said, of course I'm going to be your friend. You're not going to be visiting here anymore. I said, of course I will be visiting. You're my friend. I will, I will visit you. And then she grabbed my arm again, and she said, cling to God. The doctors can't do anything for me. 
witchcraft, can't do anything for me. That's what she was. She was a medium. She was a spiritist. She was doing witchcraft. You see, Hosea 4, 6 says, my people perish. In other words, they are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. You see, for the lack of knowledge, we do all these crazy things. Instead of the truth. You know, when you do crazy things and evil things, the Bible says that you arouse anger in God. God's going to be angry at you. Things are not going to go well with you. And Leviticus 19.31 says, Do not turn to mediums or seek out spiritists, for you will be defiled. In other words, you're going to be violated by them. I am the Lord your God. Look what God is telling us. Don't seek these people. Because you're going to be violated. <coughs> Let me illustrate you what the Lord was saying. I met a young woman one time because she came to our office for, to assist her with help and with some kind of services. And I spoke to her. She told me her story. And her story was that she married this man who paid so much money to dress all in white and to do witchcraft. And she was following the same step to be that person. And you know what? People would come up to them seeking help. And she said she met 50 married people that they destroyed. 50. That means the legacy of those children were never going to be met. They're not going to be raised by a, a full family. Destroy 50 marriages. That's what defile means. But the reason she got away from this is because one day, because they have the Bible, these people have the Bible, these people that do the witchcraft have the Bible. One day, she read a, a psalm, and it was a psalm that her mom read to her when she was a little girl. She was so rebellious, she left her mom, she left everything to live this life. And when she read that, she said, it's time to leave this life. And that's why she was in my office seeking help because she was moving away from that because that was evil. Praise God. You see, the Bible talks about that you and I can repent when we do evil things. And Isaiah 43, 25 says, I, even I, and he who blouts out your transgression. Look, God wants to erase those things from you. For my own sake and remember your sin no more. Look at that. God is so good that he wants to block out. He wants to change that darkness in your life. And he won't have it no more. And you won't have it no more. Look at Proverbs 28, 13. Whoever conceals their sin does not prosper. You know, if you keep doing evil things, you will not prosper. God's face is going to be on you. You think... Your boss's face when he's on you is bad. When God is on you, nothing's going to go well for you. You see, whoever conceals their sin does not prosper. But the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. Praise God. That means whatever you have done, you could say to the Lord. And you could find mercy. And you could repent from your ways. And you'll find mercy. So my friend, she said, I wasn't going to see her no more. You know, and to cling to God, here I am, dying. I'm, I remember traveling from the Bronx to uh, Brooklyn, going home, and then I remember that someone had given us a gift. You see, we, we in our apartment, we have a lot of our wedding gifts. About two and a half years in our marriage, and we were saving them because we had very few furniture. And we were getting other stuff so we can put these gifts there and we could use them. So we still had them packed. And I remember somebody had given us a Bible as a wedding gift. I started looking for it. And when I looked for it, I found it. Took the dust off. And that person that gave me that gift, that was my brother-in-law, Vincent. He gave me that Bible. I started reading that Bible from the beginning because that's how I was taught to read. You read the Bible from the beginning. You read a book from the beginning. I started reading Genesis. And I said, wow, God made the heavens and the earth. 
praise God, you know, and I kept reading. And then I read that, you know, uh, Abraham is not a cartoon. It's for real. And then I went into Exodus, and then I, I said, wow, look at this. That movie is based on this book. Moses, he opened the sea. He's real. That's how far I was from God. And then I crashed. I was reading the book of Leviticus. I crashed. I did not understand. I said, I never seen this done before. You see, I was seeking God. I was going after him because he was the only one I believed that was going to heal me. And you see, I read that you had to make a sacrifice. You know, I said, what am I supposed to do? do I, am I supposed to go to the biggest church in New York City, St. Patrick's Cathedral, and speak to the carnal, carnal O'Connors at the time and bring these doves so God can forgive me for my sin and I can be healed? That was crazy. I couldn't understand that. And then I was getting a little upset. I said, where's the Lord's Prayer? I'm looking for the Lord's Prayer. My mom invested so much money, a single mom, to put my sister and I to a, a Catholic school. And here I am, don't even know the Lord's Prayer. I said, where's the Lord's Prayer? So I got so frustrated, I started looking for a, a church. I went around my neighborhood where I used to work in Midtown Manhattan. I found this church. I knocked the door. I said, I want to speak to the priest. He says, okay, come on in. I'll get the priest for you. The priest came out and says, hey, how you doing? Listen, I'm looking for the Lord's Prayer. Lord's Prayer, you got a Bible? I said, yes. Where are you reading from? I said, Leviticus. <laughs> Leviticus. He says, come on in. He says, look, the Bible is, has two parts. It's the Old Testament and the New Testament. You read from the Old Testament. You need to read from the New Testament. And he gave me wise counsel. He said, look, read the New Testament as you're reading the daily news. In other words, a newspaper. And after you read it, come back again and read it with understanding. The first book in the Old Testament is Matthew, and you're going to find the Lord's Prayer there. Thank you. I left. I started reading Matthews. I said, oh, my God, Jesus Christ. And there was the Lord's Prayer. And I learned in Catholic school that you had to repeat the Lord's Prayer nine times. I was repeating the Lord's Prayer nine times. I remember I was Catholic. I started going to to church, to a Catholic church a few blocks away from my house, St. Francis Xavier. I used to go on Sundays. Then I learned they meet on Wednesday. But nothing was happening to me. I was getting worse. And I was concerned. Because I saw my first son. I said, man, I'm going to leave him fatherless. I saw my young wife. I said, man, she's going to be a widow. And I remember walking to Manhattan going to my office, Midtown Manhattan, and all these big buildings. And I, I said, man, I'm going to leave this world, this beautiful place. And then I try to justify myself with God. You know, I think we've been in that position too. You know, and here I am trying to justify myself with God. I said, God, I married my wife. I didn't elope with her. I asked the parents for permission to marry her. I went to college. I got a college degree. I just started my career. And now I'm dying. Why me? You know, you get to that why situation. Why me? Why this is not happening to so-and-so, to the criminal, to the tecato? You know, that's slang for a drug addict, you know? And I was going like this, you know. Later on, I learned that when you do stuff like that, you know, you can't justify yourself with God because God is all just and all righteous. And here I am trying to justify myself with God, you know. And so now... It's summer. And in New York, summer gets very warm. And then my brother-in-law, Vincent, who lived in California, came to visit New York, came to visit his family. And he came to visit us. And he said, hey, I heard you reading the Bible. I said, yes, I am. I heard you going to church. Yes, I am. I would like to go to church with you. I said, you're more than welcome. 
So I go on Wednesday. He came Wednesday. We went to church to St. Francis Xavier, the Catholic Church. We went. And then he, after the Mass, he says, do you think that's biblical? You see, I had a problem because I was reading a lot in the Bible. I was reading the Old Testament and the New Testament. You see, and when the priest, now I, I have a lot of knowledge about God's Word because I'm reading it. And when I hear the priest, it didn't concur what I was reading. So it made sense what he said. But that I, I just answered, I don't know. So he says, hey, I would like to come on Sunday and show you some churches that speak about God. I said, of course. Sunday he came. We lived on a three-story uh, brownstone house in Brooklyn, which is still there. And we looked down. I looked down. And I saw my brother like, like shining. He was shining. I said, what's wrong with that guy? He's shining. So I go down, and we go. And we literally walked a few blocks from my house. And we opened these doors. And here on Fifth Avenue, there was this church. We opened the door. It's so beautiful, so packed. There was a lot of beautiful people praising God. I thought these kind of people were boring. They had no sense of style. But these people were <laughs> really nice looking people. And they were praising God. Beautiful women praising God. Beautiful family praising God. Even the kids. And then in the front, there was like a band going on, and they were singing, and we just sat down and looking at this. And my brother Lord says, hey, do you think this is biblical? I said, I don't know. He says, look what Psalm 150 says. It says, everyone that has breath should praise the Lord with musical instrument. And that's what they're doing here. I said, okay. And then this young man picked up the mic, and he welcomed everyone. And later on, I found out that this young man was Leonardo Toro. Oh, when I got to know him, I loved this guy. Because this guy, he took me by his side. He pushed me along to know about God, to keep going to church, to trust in the Lord. Man, and I loved the way he preached. This brother was so anointed when he preached in English. The message went right through. Everybody received was such a blessing. And then when he preached in Spanish, he he preached in a broken Spanish, we call it Spanglish, you know, that the people, the sister, they love him so much, they will correct him, and he didn't mind correction, but the message was so anointed that even with the Spanglish, the message got through. Amen. Praise God, hallelujah, because the anointment doesn't have any barriers. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I love this brother, and he came up to us, and he said, listen, guys, um, I want you to go with this group, all right? I said, okay. I didn't know what was going on. And when we got up there, it was all of the young adults, men. What happened, they had separated the children, the adults, the married people, the ladies, and everything. And this is called Sunday school. And when we were there, right, he says, he says, my brother-in-law says, you think this is biblical? I said, I don't know. He says, yeah, you know, God tells everyone to teach the word of God to everyone. And that's what they're doing here. And later on, as I read, it, I found the word, Deuteronomy 31, 12. It says, assemble the people, men, women, and children, and the foreigners residing in your town so they can listen and learn and fear the Lord your God and follow carefully all the words of this law. Praise God. And then we left. It was like we were going club hopping, but we were going church hopping this Sunday. We went to another church on Atlantic Avenue. We walked in there. We sat down. This gentleman got up, read the Bible, and started speaking about the Bible. And he says, do you think this is biblical? I said, I don't know. What he's doing, he's preaching the word. And we left. Later on, I, as I read, I learned that in Acts chapter 2, Peter read the Bible and preached the word, and many came to Christ. Praise God. And we left the church, and we walking down Atlantic Avenue, now towards our fourth Avenue, towards my apartment. And that's when we departed. He said these words. He says, you know, these churches, they teach you about God. You could choose any of these churches until they serve you. He didn't know he was speaking prophetic. You see what happened when the Holy Spirit takes a graft on you? And once you get a message across, 
the, the messenger, the speaker, will probably never remember what he said. But the receiver will remember. Praise God. I bet I, I will speak to my brother-in-law right now. He won't remember none of this. <laughs> Praise God. But you see, you be used. You be moved. Because when God uses it, you are, the person going to receive the message that he has for that person. So don't dismay. All this time, I was seeking God and pleading for him to heal me, to restore me. You know, now the end of summer came. And the end of summer came, and I was feeling so bad. I remember because I used to work late on Tuesday night. And all of a sudden, I remember that that church that we went had a Tuesday service. You see, prior to that, I still, I continued going to the Catholic church. I continued to read God's word. But that particular evening, I felt so bad. I said, I need help. And I remember there was a church near my house that they had a Tuesday night service. So I went there. That church is called, we used to call it La Quinta. Today it's called the Park Slope Christian Tabernacle. And you know, I went there and I opened the door and I kind of walked towards the front on the right hand side. And I sat down, and I kind of, kind of sludged because I wasn't feeling well. I tried to cover my with my suit because I felt even cold. And I was just there. And later on, I learned that it was the lead pastor was preaching, Eliezer Garcia. He was preaching. I didn't understand anything what he was saying. I know he was speaking, but I didn't understand what he was saying. Mind you. I rarely spoke Spanish. Mind you, everything I did was in English. But he was speaking in Spanish. He was preaching in Spanish. I barely understood. But one thing I clearly understood when he said these words in Spanish. He said, is there, one, is there anyone here who would like to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Come up and we'll pray together. All of a sudden, I grabbed my ratchet self, ratchet self, <laughs> and picked up myself, and I walked over, and we prayed together. That was the day I accepted Jesus Christ uh, as my yeah. personal Savior. Thank you, Lord. And you know, when I sat down, a young man came that later on I learned his name was Jonathan. He came, and he embraced me, and he says, welcome to the family of Christ. You know, we meet on Sundays. And you're welcome to come. And then I started coming on Sundays. I was coming uh, uh, on Tuesday. And I would love, you know, get there on, on Thursday because Thursday it was Leonardo Toro. He would preach. He would pray. And I love watching this man. He was like a, 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 an example for me to follow, you know. And, and what was going on in my life, it was just crazy, you know. You know. When I accepted Jesus Christ, the urges for the vices disappeared. I don't know what happened. Hallelujah. It disappeared. You. you know what else happened? God gave me this love. You see, I was in love with my wife, and I married her. But that's not the love that I received. When I accepted Jesus Christ, God gave me this love for my wife that I didn't see no faults on her. I got a love for my only child at the time, for my household. I love being in my house now. And I cherish my family. You know, my wife could, didn't know how to cook, but whatever she served, it was delicious. That's the love I had. I found no fault in her, you know. It was like I had a runway model in my house. That's the love I have for my wife. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, and I will come home and I will sing these songs, you know, these Spanish songs, the Spanish hymns. And there's one particular that the pastor Eliezer, Eliezer Garcia will sing. It says, Vamos escalando peldaño, which means that you're taking a step forward because you have Jesus Christ. 
you walk in the straight and narrow because it's better with Jesus Christ. You keep pushing on because your reward is coming. You keep pushing on because you're not going to cry no more because you have Jesus Christ who's going to help you and assist you. And man, that song would just, just be with me and I would go home and I'd be singing all these quarter in Spanish and my mom was going crazy. I mean, my, my wife was going crazy. She was saying, what's the matter with you? What's going on? You going to church on Tuesday? You going to church on Thursday? You going to church on Sunday? What's happening with you? You know, talking about debates. We had epidemic debates, epic, epic debates in our household for why not to serve church and why you should serve church. <laughs> God, hallelujah. Man, we will get on it. Man, it was so such a struggle with my wife at the time, you know, to tell you such a struggle that it, it came one time that she was saying, look, man, my family has this big New Year's Eve party. We got to go. And I said, look, I don't want to do that no more. You know, she always wanted to go out. I was running away from that, and she was pulling me back in there. I said, I don't want to do that no more. And, and you know what she did on that New Year's? She left. She left me and the kids. That's how bad it was. But you know what? I continue to press on. I continue to pray on. You see, young man, young sir, young lady, I'm telling you right now, that's why you need to know you got to meet someone who knows God because you'll be in one accord. Because if, when you are in one accord, the goals that you want to achieve, you will get there. Because if you meet someone who is not in one accord with you, who loves the world and you love God, you know what? You're going to be struggling left and right and you never achieve the goal that, you, that is there for you, the blessing that God has for your life. Praise God. But I kept pressing on. Because I had a pastor, Elias Ser Garcia, he would come up to me and he says, I know you come a little late. I said, yes, pastor, every Tuesday I work late. I, this is the time I get. I should get to my neighborhood about 9, 9.30. And he says, don't worry, you know, the best thing about food is whatever's left in the pot. That's the best part. So keep coming, keep coming. He would embrace me. <laughs> and when I told him about my wife that she wanted to come to church, I said, don't worry, just continue to love her, continue to pray her to pray for her, you know, keep going, man, and this brother just keep pushing me, man, but with love and kindness and goodness, you know, I feel so good in that church, and I, we just keep going, pressing on, pressing on, and it was a struggle, praise God, hallelujah, but God was with you, God is with me, God is with us, if you confide in God, he will not leave you, he will not forsake you, he be with you, praise God, hallelujah, then, Hallelujah. Then with the encounter. You see, one, the young people, the young adults, the, the guys, they embraced me. I remember there was a guy named Israel. There was a guy, Ismail, um, Victor. And I remember one day after service, they just prayed for me. They says, come on, brother. I'm gonna pray. We're going to pray for you so you can be baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire. I said, okay, you know, I'm like, I'm like new in church, you know, all right, and they took, you know, in this church, they had a particular room, prayer room, we would go there, they would pray to me, pray, pray, pray with me, praise God, you know, later on, I was baptized the Holy Spirit in fire, I started speaking in tongues, praise God, but they don't know that, because I never testified that to them, because that happened years later, but it was that prayer, praise God, and you know, the encounter, the same brother say, look, brother, this particular Sunday, try to be a little earlier because we are going to have an evangelist. I said, what's an evangelist? It's someone that God uses that preaches God's word, and he uses them in signs and wonders. I said, okay. And that particular Sunday, I came late. And when I opened the doors to the church, it was packed. I mean, it was packed. It was packed at the aisle. They had put extra chairs. Praise God. In the back, it was packed. I had to make my, I had to push my way through so I could see whoever was preaching. On the side of the church, it was packed. People were standing. It was standing room only. And I was there. There was no flow. That was no flow. It was, that church was packed. I don't know who that evangelist was. I don't know his name, but I know he was there. And then I see a hand in the middle of the crowd, and it was my brother, 
Victor said, come on, come on, I got room for you. I got room for you. I had like a little spot between, you know, but I fit in there. You know, we sat there and I had my little Bible on my hand and I sat down and then I started seeing the guy preaching. He was just speaking. And then he said the following. He said, faith comes by hearing and hearing by God's word. And that caught my attention. And he kept talking and now he moved over here. And he said here, faith comes by hearing, and by hearing by God's word. Hallelujah. And then I looked down at my Bible, and then something extraordinary happened. I said, Lord, I come to church to hear your word. I said, Lord, I read your word. And in your word, I learned that you are the God that heals thee. And in your word, in Proverbs, I heard, Lord, that your word is medicine to my bone, to my skin. Praise God. And I also learned, Lord, that in Mark 16, he said, for those who believe, they will lay hands on the sick and they will be healed. They will get well. And you know what I used to do when I took a shower and I saw my skinny body, I will put my hands on myself and I will pray over myself. Ask God for forgiveness to heal me, heal me, you know? And I told the Lord that and I looked up again and the guy said, the, the evangelist said, hearing, faith comes by hearing and hearing by God's word. And when he said that, I look at my Bible and I say, I believe, Lord. I believe your word. And when I looked up, the whole church looked blurry. He was the only one that was so clear, like night and day. But the whole church was blurry. And then I felt something upon me. It was something holy that came upon me. And I felt this movement in my body that my knees started moving. And I said, oh my God, you're healing me, Lord. I wanted to scream, but I was screaming inside. Oh my God, you're healing me, Lord. And I was trying to hold on because something has come over me. Praise the living God. That evangelist probably would never know that that miracle happened. Some of the people in that church at Park Slope Christian Tabernacle would never know what happened. But it was there that the Holy Spirit got a grasp on me and then healed me. Praise God because I said, I believe. I believe. And I have faith in God. And God healed me that day. And that was the day that I met Jehovah Rapha, the God that healeth thee. God is your healer. God is my healer. For whoever call out to his name, he would heal you. Praise God. And then miracles started happening in our life. Praise the Lord. You see, now it's coming on almost to autumn of that year. And the birth of a second child is coming. All this time, my wife is pregnant. And praise the Lord. I remember it was time to give birth. And I remember praying in the kitchen. I said, Lord Jesus, have mercy on us. I brought all this stuff to this family. I brought all this stuff to my wife who doesn't even know this. Have mercy on the child. He's no part of this. Have mercy on, on my wife. Because we were going to the same hospital that I was being treated at. And you know what? That day, the word came. The word says in Acts chapter 16, 31, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you and your household shall be saved. You know what? When we gave, when we gave birth, we always had two names. Uh, Lauren and Giovanni. Eric and Giovanni. And Giovanni came. Praise God, and he was well. My wife was well. Praise God. Two years later, we gave him birth again for our third child. And I remember coming back from Sunday school, and I see my wife lying on bed, and she says, I want this child to be a girl, but we're not going to have no more children if it's a boy. I said, absolutely, you know. But I want, I want this child to be a girl. And I said to my wife, I said, you know what? 
I learned in Sunday school today where there's two or three in his name. He's going to be in the midst of it. Did you believe that? And she said, yes. Let's pray for this child. And we pray for this for the third child. And the word came true. Lauren came in. Our third child was born. Praise the living God. Because we trusted in the Lord. God started working in our life. Hallelujah. You know, God answered our prayers. You know, God has blessed our family. You know, my wife just didn't stay that way. Another time there was a young man preaching in, in church at that at La Quinta and she accepted Jesus Christ. Praise God, you know. And our family all served the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lawrence is like an evangelist. We've been in so many missions trips. We've been we're doing so many things for the Lord all this time. But it was because God came into our life. We allow God to come yeah. in. We call out to his name and he has blessed us. Sometimes we watch TV and we say, oh my God, we've been in that country. Oh my God, we've been. It was God making a way for us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, I wanted to be healed right away when I was going through that crisis. You know, I don't, I don't wish this on anyone because it was a very, very dark time in my life. And you know what? I wanted God to heal me right away. You know? But God did not heal me right away. It took a while. And I thank God it happened. Because you know what happens when you're in a trial, in a situation? Those are the times that you get close to God. Those are the times you call out to God. Those are the times you remember. Like I remember, I was a Catholic. I, then I remember I, somebody gave me a Bible as a gift. And I started reading God's Word. That's when I got close to God. It's those crazy times that you and I get close to God. And it's, and it's those times is that God will reveal himself to you because those are the times you humble yourself. Don't wait to times like this. You can humble yourself now. You can call to God now. Don't wait till there's a crisis in your life. Hallelujah. Don't wait till there's some life change challenges in your life. Call out to the Lord now. Hallelujah. Listen, I, I, I repent from saying all these things, you know, about God. I'm trying to justify myself about why me, why me, why this is happening. You know, Moses, when he took out the people from Israel out of slavery, you know, when they were in the, in the desert, you know, they started murmuring, talking about God, you know, hey, listen, you know, you, if you were God, you should have gave us all a Tesla, you know, so we could go air conditioning, you know, and some prime ribs, you know, to go along the way, you know. You never had prime ribs. You never had a Tesla. You never had that. Why are you murmuring against God? You know, look at Job. You know, Job, he was blessed, man. He had everything. He lost everything. He lost his business. He lost his kids. He lost everything. And on top of that, he was afflicted with an illness. And you know what Job said? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. He never spoke about God. And you know what God did? He multiplied everything and more. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. You know, if you've done stuff like that, like I did, I repented later on when I learned about God. I said, Lord, forgive me. I'm trying to justify myself with you. Trying to ask for why, why, why this? Praise God. As we close today, you know, perhaps you lost a child. Perhaps you're going through some craziness. Perhaps you've been in a terrible accident. Perhaps your spouse left you. Perhaps, you know, you're in a situation where there seems to be no way. Perhaps you're being afflicted with an illness, cancer, whatever it is. I want you to remember this. Psalm 9, verse 9 to 10. I'm going to read it for you. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed. If you're being oppressed right now, remember these words. The Lord is a refuge for you. A stronghold in times of trouble. Perhaps you're going through some situation that you find no way out. He's a shelter for you. Praise God. Look at verse 10. It says, those who know your name trust in you. Praise God. Get to know God and trust in him. 
Look, we trust on some of our spouse and they leave us. We trust on our jobs and the job ends. We trust on money and the, mon the money is gone. But trust in him. Hallelujah. Because you know what it says? For you, Lord, have never forsake those who seek you. Hallelujah. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He'll be with you. He will walk in the shadow of death with you. No matter what you're going through, no matter what your situation, cling to the Lord. Grab onto his promises. Praise the living God. You see, when we read this, when we read God's word, it's like a bomb that comes over you Hallelujah. that suits your body, that heals your skin, that heals your bone. Hallelujah. And that's what you get in God's word. Praise God. Trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. No matter what you're going through, Amen. trust in the Lord. God is your healer. Hallelujah. Believe. Oh, to keep it our sight. Believe. I believe I'm speaking to someone right now. Believe. Hallelujah. And receive it. Right there, receive it. Wherever you're at. Wherever you're at. Whatever your need is, receive it. Hallelujah. If it's over your health, receive it. Hallelujah. Divine healing. Divine healing. Divine liberation. Hallelujah. Divine forgiveness for your wrongdoings. Hallelujah. Divine forgiveness for our parents who have done so many crazy things that now we are suffering. Amen. Forgive your parents. Hallelujah. Jesus. God is ministering right now. Hallelujah. God loves you. He will not forsake you. Some of you have said, where are you, God? And you are angry at God. Don't be angry at God. Be like Job. He said, you give and take away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And Job was blessed. Hallelujah. Double. And some. Praise God. Hallelujah. You see, this relationship starts when you have Jesus Christ in your life. The word says, whoever called out to his name, shall be saved. Hallelujah. The word says in Romans 10, 9, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that he was raised from the dead, you'll be saved. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? If you and I believe that, we could accept Jesus Christ as a personal savior in a prayer. Are you ready? You could pray with me. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Pray with me. It says, it goes like this. Lord Jesus, forgive me for my sins. I repent from all my ways. And I open the heart of my heart. And I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. See, when you open your door to Jesus Christ, He will lead you. He will guide you. He will bless you. He's going to show you things that you've never seen before. I have seen things that I've never seen before. I thank God that God brought me to that church in Brooklyn, New York which is called now the Park Slope Christian Tabernacle. I thank God for Pastor Leonardo Torre. He went on to be with the Lord. He never saw me preach. He never saw me evangelize. He never saw me going to a missions trip. Praise God. But his work is alive. Praise God. And you as a minister keep doing the work. Praise God. Because when you get to heaven, you'll find out what your, the fruits of your work. Praise the Lord. And thank God for Pastor Eliseo Garcia. He almost took me like a son. Guided me, encouraged me, gave me great counsel in the middle of my crisis. He didn't know I was dying. He didn't know I was going through some crazy things. 
Even my marriage was such a chaotic situation. But God made a way for us. Praise God, and we are here today. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the work that you've done in our life. And we thank for the, the work that you're going to do in everyone here. Father, Lord, right now, we're going to pray for you. We're going to pray for your marriage. We're going to pray for your health. We're going to pray for whatever you think that you have no way out. We're going to pray for your business. Hallelujah. Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we ask that you touch everyone that is listening, Father, Lord. Father, Lord, that we bring up their burns up to you, Father, Lord. If they are stricken by any kind of illness, arthritis, cancer, whatever it is, we bind it, we cast it out in the name of Jesus, and we declare divine healing over them. Hallelujah, Father. Lord. For those that are fighting those spiritual warfare because of the wickedness of witchcraft, we bind out that wickedness, that, that, that the devil's lie, we bind them out of their lives, that unholy alliance, and we bind them out of their lives in the name of Jesus, and we are they are delivered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Father, we pray for the people, their businesses, Almighty God. Make a way for them, Father Lord. Open up accounts, Almighty God. Bless their finances in the name of Jesus, Father Lord. Father, those marriages, Father Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father Lord. Father, heal their wounds, Almighty God, Father Lord. Whatever have come against these marriages that try to break them apart, we bind that and we cast it out in the name of Jesus, Father Lord. And let th these marriages get healed, restored for your honor and your glory, O oh Lord Jesus. Oh, I tell everyone today, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. He will not forsake you. He will not leave you. He will not abandon you. No matter what your situation is, hallelujah. I was such in a bad situation that God took me out. I was so deep in the dark that God brought me to the light and blessed my family, gave me two more children when I thought it was all ended. But to him, it was the beginning. And today is the beginning of your life. Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Trust your marriage to the Lord Jesus Christ. Trust your business in Jesus Christ. Trust your life to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And you're going to be blessed today. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. Give God praise. Blessed be the name of the Lord. <laughs>